If you're the owner of a new telescope, one of the first things you're going to want to look at is the planets. But to get optimal views of the planets, there's a few little things you need to take into consideration. Well, here's a few of my favourite hints and tips to get the best views. Hello, welcome to my channel Small Optics, my name is Jason and in this video we're going to be looking at getting the best views of those planets. So let's get the first tip out of the way, uh, probably the one that you're all going to go, oh, no not that word, but yes, collimation. Now if you're a reflector user, um, it's very important that, that your telescope is in good collimation uh, when viewing the planets because when viewing the planets, you're going to be using high magnification, okay? And if your telescope isn't tuned up, then you, you just, you're just going to get a blurred mess, really. Um, now, if you're a little bit worried about collimation, I have done a full video on a, a very easy method, no lasers involved, on collimating uh, a reflector telescope. So if you want to go and have a look at that, uh, I'll leave a link in the description. Of course, if, if you're a refractor user, then you, you don't have to worry about this too much. I mean, it's, it's very rare that refractors need collimating. Now, because we're, we're, we're using high magnification, uh, one thing we don't want to do is overpower your telescope or any given telescope. So, how do you know if you're overpowering it? Well, underpowering is easy, okay? If you're not seeing what you, <laughs> you want to see, you, you knock the power off. But if you overpower any telescope, again, all you're going to see, no matter how well it's collimated, is a fuzzy, but the, the size is going to be right, but you're not going to see any detail, okay? And the w easiest way to find out what's the maximum power of any telescope is just to simply times the aperture by two, okay? Or, or, or double it, <laughs> if you like, okay? So mine's a 130. So, in actual fact, the maximum magnification that this can achieve is round about 260 times. Okay, if you've got a 70 millimeter refractor, then that maximum is round about 140 times. Okay, now it's very, very rare that you will push uh, magnifications up, you know, uh, much above 180 really. I mean, it's very, very rare I, I, I push this usually, it's around about 100, 100 times is usually my maximum that I'll use this for. Purely because you've got to have perfect conditions to really push your telescope to the max. So how do we get up to these uh, kind of magnification powers? Well, this is where our uh, trusty friend, the Barlow lens comes in. Um, now, I wouldn't go for cheap, short focal length eyepieces, okay? You may have seen a few of them uh, kicking around on the internet. You know, I've seen some as cheap as £10, <laughs> okay? Uh, now, you, you are wasting your money, trust me. Uh, you'd be far better off spending your money on a decent uh, upgrade on maybe the one that's already been uh, supplied with your telescope. Um, I'd be a bit wary of that one. Uh, they're usually not that good, uh, they're a little bit like batteries uh, that are supplied with things that just to get you going um, and it's always worth just upgrading to something a little bit better. Um, and a, a great choice is this here, the, um, uh, the Celestron Omni, I think it's around about £20-£30 or whatever your country's equivalent is and this is a great upgrade uh, to the, your exis existing uh, supplied Barlow lens. Now, the thing is with Barlow lenses is if you've got an eyepiece with a nice eye relief uh, and a, a good wide field of view, a Barlow lens is going to maint maintain all that uh, when you're using it. You're still going to have that nice eye relief um, and, and a nice wide field of view. Unlike uh, cheap, uh, short focal length eyepieces, trust me, they're like looking through a straw um, they have no eye relief whatsoever, usually they're made of cheap optics, you get a lot of false colour involved with them. Um, I would recommend though, if you do um, want a short focused uh, eyepiece, uh, and this is an incredibly budget one, um, this is made by Revelation Astro, okay, uh, it's a 6mm and it's a Plossel, 
um, and they retail around about 25 30 pounds something like that okay so we're not spending considerable amounts of money um, this is a great little eyepiece for the money really uh, the only downside to it is it's out it's got hardly any um, eye relief at all to it you know you have to really get up there it is a 52 degree field of view which ain't bad really but like I say just um, invest in uh, an upgrade um, your eyepieces and your Barlow um, is definitely going to improve your views of the planets. Now while we're on the subject of equipment and upgrading equipment if you're a refractor user uh, one thing that's definitely worth upgrading is your star diagonal okay or diagonal whatever you want to call it um, again you don't have to spend you know uh, take a small loan out for one just improving it you know to something a little bit better because if there's ever going to be a weak link in a refractor telescope it's usually the star diagonal okay now there's a really easy test you can do to see if your star diagonal is any good is to simply um, go out on a nice clear night and, and uh, get something in focus and get it to the uh, best that you think you can see it okay now take the diagonal out um, and place the eyepiece directly into the focusing tube um, and refocus, okay, and have a look. Now if you see a difference, then I'm afraid <laughs> you've got a bit of a problem and uh, it means that your diagonal definitely needs uh, upgrading. Um, what you're supposed to see when you do this little experiment is uh, absolutely nothing, really. If you're not seeing anything at all, uh, then your, your diagonal's fine. But it is highly recommended to uh, just, just upgrade any diagonal that comes with a, uh, your telescope, that's provided with your telescope, should I say. Now, when observing the planets, the best time to observe any planet is when it's highest in the sky, okay? So it's a good time to just wait when it's like at its peak. Um, and I, know, I know it's not always the case, uh, uh, depending on uh, the, the, that particular orbit of the planet. It may be stay quite low towards the horizon. And in that case, there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. But generally, all planets will come to a peak of, uh, of the horizon, okay? And that's the best time, because what you're doing is you're looking through a lot uh, cleaner air. Down on the horizon, it's the real thick, muddy uh, air that uh, will really cause uh, that wobble in the image. I mean, the, I'm not saying don't look at the planets when they're low on the horizon, but just wait till they're at the highest point um, and then start observing the planets and you'll find that uh, you're definitely getting the best views there. Another great tip to uh, gain optimal views of the planets, or any kind of um, observing really, um, is to get to learn to know the sky conditions. Uh, now there's a very easy test you can do uh, uh, to, to test the stability of the atmosphere. And that is to just look at a nice bright star, okay, any star will do. And just to see how it is twinkling, if you like. Now, if it's really fast, twinkling really, really fast, okay, that means that the uh, atmosphere is very unstable, okay. What you want is a nice, soft, undulating pattern, okay. So it's just like waving in and out, kind of like that. Um, if the stars are doing that, then you know that the atmosphere is nice and calm and still. The clue that the atmosphere uh, is nice and still is those nights where there's a, a slight mist in the air. Uh, and usually everything's dripping with dew. Uh, those sort of nights, I've, uh, I've had some really great uh, nights observing the planets. Now we've talked about the uh, environment as, as a whole, but what about the localised environment? In other words, the air in your tube. Now this is something you need to take into consideration. You need to let your telescope cool down no matter what size it is, okay? Um, if it's a reflector uh, this size, usually a good 20 minutes to half an hour to let, let all the air um, become even um, inside the tube. So, so in other words, it's the same temperature inside the tube as it is outside the tube. 
Um, if you don't let your uh, telescope cool down, you will get wavy, and you may think the atmosphere is really bad because the uh, you know you get these wavy uh, images, and it's not. It, it'll be simply uh, because you're on high magnification, you are actually magnifying those little uh, fluctuations in temperature. Um, Again, with the refract, if you're a refractor user, um, I would add a few more minutes onto that, maybe 10 to 15 minutes, because you've got to remember, uh, refractors are a closed unit, um, so it's going to take a little bit longer for the air to cool down in a refractor than it is in a reflector. When you are cooling down, a little tip, when you are uh, taking your telescope to cool down, obviously remove all dust covers. Uh, including your eyepiece one, um, and, and that's going to obviously allow air to be uh, flowing through the tube a lot easier. Same with the, ref uh, the, the, re uh, the refractor, just uh, take out your diagonal, or you can just take out uh, the dust cover here uh, at the end of the dial. Just, just allow as much cool air to get into the tube as you possibly can. Now the best time to view any planet is when it's at opposition. Okay, now opposition is just a fancy word uh, for saying when it's closest to us. Okay, um, now every planet is on an orbit and, and, and sometimes that orbit will take, us uh, take that planet closer to Earth and sometimes it will be further away. Okay, so when it's at opposition, it's, at the, it's closest to us uh, and anything that's closer is easier to see. Um, it's really easy these days to find out when a any planet is at opposition and it's just a simple Google search and Google will tell you everything you need to know. Well, that's my top tips for getting the best views out of the planets. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Uh, I do do regular uploads for the uh, new astronomer. So in the meantime, go and find yourself a planet and take very good care of yourselves. Bye for now.